So we talk about the box in general. You know, there's a two big design criteria that, you know, I had when I built this box. Number one is I wanted it to be portable. Sometimes, you know, I see these kinds of things built and they're kind of tied into your truck camper and they're kind of hard attached up in the front or something like that. And, um, and you only use them when you go camping. But I really wanted to be able to, you know, have a unit like this that's kind of mobile that I could use in the house. So if the power went out, I could plug in whatever I needed to plug in. So I could plug a refrigerator in there. I, I generally just use it as kind of a UPS. So upstairs I have my workstation plugged into it. And if the power goes out, this will power my workstation until I have an opportunity to shut it down. And probably for much longer than that. So that was the first design criteria is I wanted it to be portable. I wanted it to be usable in multiple locations. You know, another criteria is I wanted it to be kind of maintainable, you know, something that I could extend or add on to. Um, and so there's really kind of two main sections, the bottom of this box. So that whole bottom right there is mostly battery. Um, there are some electronic components and shunt is down there. Um, and you can see some panels on, on this side and there's a plug in on the other side, but it's mostly battery. So that's battery space at the bottom. And there's a, as I mentioned before, there's a 24 volt, 100 ampere hour battery in the bottom. And then the top is really kind of the control area. And inside the control area, you can access it through a panel. And so it makes it really easy for me to kind of get in here and, here and just make sure everything is, is working correctly and, and I can access things easily. And then it's super easy for me to undo four bolts. So there's a bolt here. There's a, a bolt on that side and a two on this side over here. And then I can pull this whole top off. And we'll see that as we do the upgrade. And then the other thing that is easy is this whole panel right here is easily removable. And I can move it over to a bench and work on it. And so it makes it super easy to service and super easy to maintain um, and replace components and just get access to everything. All right, so I'm gonna start the installation of the solar panel on the truck camper today. And so the plan is just to mount that solar panel and talk about the details of that solar panel in a second. Um, we're gonna mount that up on the top of the, the wedge top camper towards where the V opens down there. And we're gonna install this solar controller um, by Victron inside of the battery unit that we've already built. So I already have YouTube videos showing all the steps to build this. Um, essentially there is a 24 volt, 100 ampere hour battery in the base here. I have a 3000 watt inverter here. I have a temperature controller that controls the fans. This is the input fan, it sucks air in. And then there's an output fan over here that blows air out. So between those two fans, you can get quite a bit of air flowing across all these electronics. This is a Victron smart battery charger. So that actually plugs into the AC of your house and will charge the battery via the AC. So then there's an automatic transfer switch. This automatic transfer switch has one output, which powers these outlets right here, but it has two inputs. So one input is from the actual inverter and the other input is from a pass-through from the house. So that, that outlet right there. So this senses if the house power is on, it's a pass-through to those outlets. If the house power gets interrupted at all, then the battery powers the inverter and the inverter powers those outlets. I left a little space right here for me to install that solar charger. And so my plan is to mount this solar charger in this unit, probably in that space right there someplace. Now I do understand that the manual says to mount this vertically, and that is for the airflow through these um, cooling fins. And so normally when you mount this, you mount this vertically and hot air rises and it pulls air through these fins. But because I have forced air, I think I'm gonna be okay if I mount this in this unit and I'm gonna to try to mount it in such a way that air is flowing through those fins. I might even go as far as moving this 
unit over so that the direct air from the fan can blow through those fins right there. I haven't decided that part yet. We'll see. First steps though, I'm gonna dismantle this top part so I can get access to where I need to get access to. Um, the battery unit is off right now, so everything's de-energized. Um, I just need to remove some of these connectors here and I'll be able to pull this top part off after I disconnect some of the fan wires. And we'll check back in after I get that part off. All right, so remove those. So just to get an idea, if you pop the top off of that. So what we're really looking at after the top is off is this is a separate tray. It's held down by this little flat piece of metal, and I'll undo those in a second. We'll be able to pop that off and work with this directly. And then the tray, the top part here, is just, I guess, three quarters of a box, or part of a box, I guess. There's not a side and a bottom. Um, this side is held down by magnetic latches, and there's your, your fan input and your output fan. And then I just have a, a wire so I can disconnect them. So I'm going to loosen up this so I can get access to um, that panel now. So there's that flat panel removed. I'll set this over here on the box. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to get access a little bit more just to this tray by itself. I've got it disconnected, but the battery in the, in the base box is still connected up and the battery leads come to the, this tray and there's really kind of two poles here. I'm using this bolt on this breaker as one pole and then I'm using the negative side of the inverter as the other pole. So that's where the 12 volt leads come in. So that's the negative side. And then this is the positive side. And then the positive side runs through the breaker to the inverter over there. So I'm just gonna disconnect the positive sides and the negative sides of the battery. And, we'll, and this upper tray will be free. Okay, so I've got the connector. I got the wires disconnected from this lug here. And also from that lug, I initially I put tape around the positive just in case somehow that gets switch gets turned on and I'm making contact. Here are the leads for the smart battery charger, which we may move inward just to get airflow through that other piece. But at this point, everything that's connected in the lower box to the upper box is disconnected except for some of these connectors. So I'll just remove some of them. And now this upper box, I got one more wire here. Let me get this with one hand. So that powers the fan controller. And now this all should be free and I should be able to lift that out. And I'm gonna do that with two hands. So here's the control board for this battery system kind of plucked out and you can see it was just sitting in here on this little tray that I made out of um, some angle iron. So when I assembled it, that's how I decided to mount this, something that I could pull out easily. You can see the batteries, ampere time, 24 volt, 100 ampere, like I talked about earlier. There is a smart battery sensor that senses the battery temperature. And then over on this side, you can see a couple of bigger lugs for, you know, all the 12 volt power that's coming in. Down at the very bottom, I don't know if it'll focus, but there is a Victron shunt down there. Um, and on this side is kind of all the components for the 12 volt converter, which is right here. So that's a 24 volt to 12 volt converter. There's the outlets for the 120 volt AC outputs. And then here's a bunch of outlets for um, DC. Anyways, I covered most of this in other videos. So then this lower box is most of the bulk and most of the weight. Um, it just contains the battery itself. And then the upper part is contains more of the control units. The plan today is to add this MPP controller to the, this top tray here. And again, because I know where the airflow is coming from the fan this direction, and I know these fins have a preferred fan direction, I might actually mount this so it's set or turned a little bit. All right, so now that we've got this disconnected, what I'm thinking is I'm gonna rotate this this direction, 
and then I'll be able to fit in my solar controller. Normally you would mount this vertically because these fins, hot air rises and it'll, it'll be natural induction um, pulling air through those fins and cooling this unit off. But because I have forced air and it's coming from left to right, so the wind's blowing this direction through those fans, I think if I mount this this direction, the forced air will be forced through the fins and we'll get cooling off it for this controller. And then I also see that if I ever want to add another charge controller, it looks like I do have room on the back side right here for the same size charge controller. So if I ever want to kind of double up the number of charge controllers, I could do that and I have the space for that. But for now, this project, I'm going to mount this over here someplace and then mount that one there. And then I'll worry about the cable management a little bit later. So that's the next step. Okay, so here we are with them mounted. So I mounted it just like I talked about. Airflow will go from in this direction through those um, cooling fins. And I change the direction of this battery monitor. In fact, there's a cooling port down here too. It might benefit from being in this direction also. So next thing is, is I need to make up a couple of cables to um, connect the battery and a couple of cables to, to mount the solar panel. So on the battery connector side, I'm going to actually use the 10 gauge wire, but I'm going to use these ferrules and I'm going to cramp the ferrules on the end. I haven't crimped them yet. Um, that allows you to easily kind of connect and disconnect and you don't have to worry about degrading your wires. I did the same thing on, you know, the battery charger here. So you can see the yellow tabs there. So that's the same thing. These are heat shrink ends too. So I'll crimp and then I'll heat shrink them and then I'll be all set with this side. After heat shrinking and crimping, they look like this, that so they kind of got that square profile and that fits very nicely into the Victron um, ports here. I haven't loosened those up yet, but it'll fit very nicely into there. The other end, I'll make it look just like this eventually. And the idea is to connect all of these wires up to those same posts that you saw me disconnect when I started this project. After crimping, we got matching ends. One is for the battery charger, the other is for the solar charger. Next steps, you gotta get this wire connected to the solar charger and then put the controller unit back into the battery pack and then connect all the wires back up. Okay, so we got the battery side connected positive and negative and then those cables are the same as they attach these cables through these two lugs so there's the positive lug and the negative lug and that might not be the very best way to do it but that's the easiest way for this case and if there's any disadvantage of that feel free to leave a comment in the video um, but for now I have those are my two main lugs coming in next thing I'm gonna get the solar panel hooked up to here and we'll see if we can turn this thing on and have it uh, accept in solar energy so this is a temporary setup right now. I just have this solar panel. I'm going to mount that on top of the truck eventually. Um, but step one here is I just wanted to get the solar charge controller installed correctly into the box. I also need to order one part from Amazon. My goal is to take the two solar panel cables and run them to an Anderson connector that's in this wall. And that way I'll be able to plug in and unplug the solar panel. So if I want to take this box inside, and use it as a UPS, I can do that. Um, but I wanna need that Anderson connector. So I need to order that from Amazon. So that'll come in maybe a day or two and I'll show, show that. But for now, things are wired back up and things are looking good. It's the next day, Amazon delivery finally came. So, so what came in the mail today was that port. So this is the port um, that we're gonna use. And that way I can use to put that in that side over there and then I have this to convert from the solar panels to that connection so that way I can plug those in and I think I have to be careful make sure positive goes to positive um, there is a converter here if I have to do that converter but um, before I wire it up I want to make sure that it certainly goes you know positive to positive so I've taken apart um, the bits I think I need to in order to get access to this panel here. So I pop the top, you can see the tops on the back of the truck over there. And then I loosened up a couple of these here that hold this and I can spread this out wide. Then I took the bolts out of the, the main switch. 
So the main switch is now kind of loose. And I think that this panel will be able to come out. So I don't know where I can put you. Let's see if I can put you maybe over here. There we go. Let's see if you can watch me get this out, or maybe not. All right, so we got this panel out. Now that I got the panel out, I can work on adding that other port. All right, so I did some quick measurements. It looked like from the top here, this is about five inches. Same thing on that side, about five inches. So true horizontal line, panel's about 12 and a half inches wide. So try to get something in the middle here. It's about six and a quarter. So I'll drill here about the size of that width, and then probably use a file just to kind of finish it up, make it tight put some bolts in it so it secures it, and then we'll be able to start mounting this thing back up. Okay, so got this uh, drilled out to the size and, and got it press fitted so it's pretty tight. Then I used the uh, fitting itself to kind of, for a template to drill the holes through. And now we're ready to put some hardware on there. So I'm gonna drop four of these bolts in, but I'm gonna surround them with um, washers and lock washers. All right, so I got that bolted in and again it's a, a bolt and then a washer and a washer a lock washer and a nut there so i'm going to put you back over here I'm try to slide that in while you watch and hopefully you don't fall maybe you can see it in right there okay. okay so opposite of what we just did just kind of spread this out a little bit i'm going to use my can and Spray out some of that stuff. Always nice to have compressed air around. Okay, so that's in. Let's get my main on off switch back where it should be. Okay, I know my battery's running low, so I'm gonna button all this up while I'm off screen and we'll come back in a little bit. All right, so we got this side of the panel done. And again, this side of the panel is mostly for inputs and the main power. So this is the solar input, positive and negative. This is the house power, so 120 volt AC. I can take an extension cord and plug it in there and charge the batteries that way. Got the solar charger now completely hooked up. So there's the, the solar charger that we put in. Um, and the only thing that we were missing was th were these two cables. These two cables, now they go down to that, the back side of this port. So everything inside the box is now complete, and I can tidy all of this up, button it back up, and then we'll be done inside the box. Then the remaining stuff is all outside the box. You know, installing the solar panel, uh, running the cables, getting the ends of the solar panel, um, the connectors on, and everything. Now I got the battery box kind of in the position where it's going to go. It's going to go on the right hand side just like this. Um, over on the left hand side where you can see I got a, a water bin and a bucket right now. Um, there's enough space for a fridge. So that fridge will go right in, in kind of in this area. So what that leaves me is easy access to the on off switch. All right, the solar panels are, you know, I'll clean up these wires and, and we'll get these wires run neatly. Um, down the side here but I have access to all the inputs so if I want to plug this in at night um, if I have shore power I can plug shore power in at night we can keep the the solar panel going there that's gonna probably end the video series here on on, on the solar